talking about donation statements, you know, uh, mid-year donation statements. So to do that, we'll go into donations. Let's click on that and hopefully it opens up. Seems to be taking a minute. There it goes. Okay, so when you get into donations, to get in, to access the donation statement section of um, the program, you have two different sections. You can click right on donation statement here on the right, um, or you can access it by clicking on reports and export at the top of the screen, and then clicking on donation statements here. It's just two different ways of accessing it depending on your preferences. You can get to it either way. It takes you to the same place. So if I click on it, and then it opens up. seems to be particularly slow today. There it goes. And then you have the um, essentially the main screen when it comes to your donation statements here. Um, by default um, your donation statements um, are selecting only those who gave and then everybody regardless of pledging. Than the and here. So it's only going to give you people who have given um, in whatever time frame um, you give it over here on the on the right. Um, you know, since we're halfway through the year now, um, or we're about to be, um, you can do quarterly statements or half year statements, uh, it's, um, or you can do it for the whole year, just kind of depending on your preferences and how you want information displayed. But if you want to change the the date range, you can either click on the little down arrow, and that'll bring up the calendar, where you can then click the arrow buttons to cycle through, um, and then you can select the. So once you have the month selected, you can then select the the day of the month. So I'll select June thirtieth. So now it's the statements are going to show all the giving from um, January 1st through June 30th. Um, the other way you can enter in the date is you can just type type in whatever date, so 06, 30, 2017. Just kind of, again, it's just your preference as to what as to what uh, as how you want to enter that um, I know there are um, uh, some people um, who may have not given yet this year obviously but they um, you may want to give them a statement in order to kind of remind them that you know you know uh, to give as they get a statement that's showing that they haven't given any you can change you can uh, do that just by clicking on giving include all and so what what do what will happen is anybody in the in your database who has you know the receive statement checkbox checked on their uh, records will get a statement if you have all here and all there and then up here in the top right is another option for the gives with family um, if you, t most of the time, most people are going to ha want to have all checked because um, that just means anybody, if they have either whether or not they have gives with family, you'll still print out a statement for them. Some people, um, 
you want to kind of have those separate and stuff depending on um, what kind of statements you send out. Um, so that gives you the option there. Um, the most the other tab that's most commonly used on these statements here um, is the sort tab. So by default, it kind of just does it. It goes by um, giver number and then giver name. Um, so everybody, um, it, so it's going to sort by you know what. So for whoever has the first giver number is going to be um, the first person that prints out uh, on the list, and, and or you can sort it alphabetically depending on um, your preferences. Then so let's click um, let's click next. I'll take a, a second to load. So we have all our criteria done on that first page, and then clicking next is going to give us the all the the list of everybody who's going to receive a statement and then we can um, choose how we send the statements out what the statements look like and everything um, all right so now that's loaded let me just maximize that so and the this grid below this grid here we have all the different people who are going to receive statements um, up here in the corner, we have the quarterly section date range. Since we um, told it on the first page to only print the six, first six months of the year on the statements, um, the quarterly section date range automatically uh, changed to reflect that as well. But you could change it um, to be um, you know, more months or less months, depending on on what you want it to do. Um, up here in the top left, we have the statement layout with the different kinds of um, statements we can have. Um, we have a whole bunch of edited ones in here, but the the four, uh, the two, essentially pre-built ones are the windowed envelope and the trifold mailer. Most people seem to do the windowed envelope, but obviously it's it's up to you. Um, so from here, uh, typically you don't really have to do, if you're just printing out uh, statements, there's typically you don't have to do anything on this except um, you know, select your, your layout and then your edit your global memo. So the global memo on the second line here is the basically a little message at the bottom of each statement and you can edit that to change whatever to say whatever you want since we're doing a um, mid-year statement we obviously don't want the end of year giving one so we could call this maybe um, mid-year I clicked um, real quick I clicked on the it's a little piece of paper icon right here and this allows me to edit or create more or new global memos so let's go back so I give it mid-year um, so we could put like I think we put like all donations you know You know, something indicating that it was for the first six months. Obviously, you would have you guys would know better what you want it to say for your individual churches um, and the like. But I'll just put something there um, so we can show you how it looks on the actual statement. So I'll click Add, select it at the bottom, and click OK, and then. I'm going to click and email the click in the bottom right corner here to actually generate the statements itself. The print email statements button. 
Oh, I don't have any emails selected. I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, but this is going to just show you um, the ones that we created. All right. So the the text I create. I let's zoom in here. The text I created. The all donations were for the first six months. That see she, you see how that shows up at the bottom of this statement here and then the rest of it rest of the statement if I scroll back up you can see up here in the top right corner the statement date range is just for the first six months and the quarterly section is showing you just the first two quarters of the year and then all the other information is already built in, so you know all the rest of the information stays the same, essentially, except you know ad adjusting the totals for when you change uh, the length of time. And then from there, you can just print it out. If you want to email the the statements um, up here in the top left corner. Yeah, there's the email tab so you click on that and then uh, the the most important the, the the most important and really the main thing that you need to have in order to actually set up emailing through church windows is you have to know who your um, email provider is um, without that um, you won't be able to um, send emails through church windows because you essentially need um, specific settings through um, specific settings from your email provider and and then give that information to church windows to uh, to actually send emails so we have one um, built into the system already we um, just kind of as a sample it's not going to be the same for you or anything um, but let me click the the pencil here to edit um, on that line to edit to kind of show you what that screen looks like so I click the pencil brings up this setup SMTP email window um, the first line display name is just um, as it as it say, st says here, it's internal to the program only. Um, you can have multiple email settings set up. So you know, if you want to have have something send from multiple different people, or have it say it's from different people, um, that's where you would uh, identify that. Um, the most important information within the SM within the setup is this outgoing mail server. If you use Gmail. Um, this is this is the uh, outgoing mail server you need. It's just smtp.gmail.com. Um, for ninety nine percent of the companies out there that you have your emails through, typically all you have to do is just Google um, or do a s internet search for you know your internet provider email settings or SMTP email settings. Um, let me just open up Google Chrome and kind of show you what I mean I can um, do let's just do Comcast Comcast SMTP settings and then like this typically the search first search results will take you to um, Comcast website or you know you know or Spectrum or Time Warner etc etc uh, you just do that search and it'll take you to this website and that'll give you this information so for outgoing it's just smtp.comcast.net give you the port numbers and everything and then you can go back into church windows and enter in that information so for the outgoing mail server Typically, 
this port number 587 is the same for most of uh, most um, most companies um, but you really just have to copy and paste it from their website and once you have everything in here set up you just click perform connection test and then it will basically go out and make sure it can actually communicate with that server with uh, um, with Gmail or Comcast etc and you click OK and then the from email this line here that click the green plus sign and then enter in the email address that you want to email from and then the username is going to be that same email address and then the password is going to be the password that you use to access that email address whether it be on gmail.com or whatever whatever um, email uh, provider you use and then from there you click send test email after you have it all set up hopefully this is successful yep and when it's successful you will get a pop-up that says you should receive an email at and then it will list your email there and click OK and then from there you are good to go to email um, to email statements for from now on it that information is set up and you are good to go um, over here on the left you have two different tabs to the left of every person you have the print tab and you have the email tab everybody um, has the option for you to check print on and that's typically how it, that's how it comes as default um, but if you want to email p and if someone doesn't have an email address it will say none or invalid if they have one entered but it's not it doesn't have like a dot com or you know it's not entered incorrectly um, to what you can automatically do is you can click down here in the bottom left click the check email for all button and what that'll do that will automatically check everybody who has um, an email um, a valid email address you can then check those so everybody with an email address is checked and if you click print email statements you'll get us a, a, a pop-up that asks you if you want to send it to those 37 uh, people and you just say yes I didn't say yes on that um, but then it goes and sends out and it, how it sends out the emails is it automatically it just sends it as an attachment so that each person who receives the statement will get a PDF of their statement that they can then open and download and view um, and then everybody else you can then uh, mail out theirs um, to them and if you have issues getting the the emails set up um, like if you're having problems finding the the actual information and everything um, it's probably best to just give us a, a call because we can um, maybe we've dealt with that particular email provider before and we can um, get that uh, set up for you and we also have webinars um, dedicated to emailing statements that you can view on our on our website as well um, um, uh, Becky is asking if there is a way to only print to those who do not have um, email and uh, yes there is uh, Becky that's a good question so let me just let me clear this screen real quick I saw drawings and I'm gonna click uncheck print for all and uncheck email for all what I'm going to do up here is um, there's a, a, a checkbox right here that says check print if no email address if I if I click that what that tells the system is when I tell it to email 
um, to also check everybody else who doesn't have an email to automatically check them to print. So if I check that and then I go down here in the bottom right and click uh, check email for all, as you can see over here on the left, everybody who has an email is checked and everybody who does not have an email, um, their, their print is checked. And the people who have email checked do not have print checked. So that way you can send out, you aren't double dipping and printing out more statements and wasting more paper and ink than you uh, need to. Then you can just click print email statements and when you do that it you know it asks you if you want to email and then you say yes to that um, and then it will then open up the rest of the statements um, in order for you to print those out so you can do both essentially at the same time so if I do that let me just say I don't want to send emails out and then um, these statements show up in order for me to uh, actually print the ones I want to print Okay, um, and that is as pretty much all I have for you guys today on uh, donation statements and mid-year mid donation statements and everything. Um, do you guys have any uh, further questions? see if any more have uh, popped in. I don't see any yet. I'm not seeing any coming in just yet. Um, again, um, oh, uh, uh, just real quick, uh, just to reiterate, you know, I'm, again, sorry about this not getting started early. I just had the wrong time uh, when this started, entered as totally um, my fault. Um, but this is recorded, um, so you can watch it later. Um, Oh, I had a question come in. Kimberly asks, what does the body of the email look like? How does it get determined? Um, it's essentially um, the same um, way as we did the, the global memo, um, the same basic type of structure. You go to the email, except you go to the email tab, and this second line here, this global email message, um, this is where you essentially tell the system what you want the subject of the email to be and what you want the um, like the the body of the email uh, to be and you can if you click here, let me click on the piece of paper again do that and it's the same type of screen except it says global email subject instead of global memo message um, so if I click email uh, email subject um you know mid year statements and then the message could be you know something to the effect of thank you for your support attached is a copy of your donation statement And then you add that and click OK. And then you can see it's selected up there where it says global email message. And then so when you send the statements, um, it's gonna they're gonna see it. It came from um, you know you know the name of your church or the name of the organization with that e with your email address. And then the subject is gonna be mid-year statements or you could put in your, your church's names mid-year statements and then the body and then attached will be the uh, PDF uh, hopefully that answers um, that question 
for you. Um, Martha asked if you would discuss the pledge per frequency quarterly annual flat and how the reports look ahead and uh, behind and ahead calculations. Okay, um, so uh, essentially, um, let me close out of. I don't think there's anybody in here. That, um, let me try and see if I can pull up a, a sample person in here that's pledged um, pledged a lot. Just kind of get an example of what their stuff would look like. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, this first person I pulled up has a uh, quarterly pledge. Since we just ran, since we ran donations or the donation statements for six months, you can see here. And so they they pledged five hundred dollars, and um, or they pledged five hundred dollars per quarter, meaning by the end of the second quarter. Um, according to the calculations, they'll have uh, so after six months or two quarters, um, the system thinks that they should have given by now um, one thousand um, dollars. So things like monthly, quarterly, weekly are all uh, uh, affected, and, and annual are all affected by whatever the um, date range is of your um, donation uh, statements. So if you do it for a whole year, it'll show you what they pledged for the entire year, uh, um, like the grand total. If, the only, if you only run it for a quarter or two quarters or three quarters, it's going to calculate that based off of, um, you know, so a quarter has four separate sections in the year. It is going to just um, if you do it for six months, it's only going to have two quarters on it, so they'll owe just a, a thousand instead of the two thousand that they have pledged for the whole year. Um, let me close out of this entirely and actually open up a a pledge real quick, a campaign, so we can kind of get a better feel for it. Expand that out. So you have. Um, once you enter in everybody's pledges, you'll see this screen. So the, this total pledged and total due right here is calculated by the program and is not something you can adjust um, directly, at least. Um, it's the amount per frequency and frequency that you enter. So you can see, let's see if I can find, so you know, weekly five dollars will have a total due of fifty two and a total pledged of two hundred and sixty. When you run statements um for less than a whole year, it will be less than that grand total because it's gonna look at try and figure out and calculate the the amount of terms within the range of your statement. Um typically there will always be money should always show up as some sort of amount pledged. The only time um, that this can cause confusion is when you um, have a one-year pledge and you run a quarterly quarterly statements and you use the um, annual frequency. So right here, so Mr. and Mrs. Scott Morris. So if you if you pledge with a frequency of annual, and you have a um, and you run a statement for less than a year, it's not going to show that they've pledged anything because technically, uh, if they have a whole year to um, a whole year to give that say three thousand dollars for these people, um, that's not technically due until twelve. 31 you know the last day of the year so if you run it if you run a report and it's only six months it doesn't the 
the system doesn't do like half half annual or or it doesn't do um it's not going to calculate half of what their annual pledge was um so if you're anybody's coming across that issue um what what i what i general generally recommend is changing it from annual to flat because flat's gonna no matter what the time frame is it doesn't care how if it's a one day pledge or a five year pledge it's always going to be whatever the amount you put in the amount per frequency um, this might be easiest if I kind of show you an example so Jack Hart has flat Mr. and Mrs. Scott Morris has annual let me run statements again real quick just for those two I'm going to run statements for just um, a six month period select just those uh, people so I have the Morris family and Jack Hart selected to print All right. so on the Morris says so they do have a pledge you can see it's annual and that they have um, given they have pledged three thousand dollars but because it hasn't been a whole year yet the system doesn't count, can't calculate that pledge amount. So it's going to show um, zero there. But if we go down to Jack Hart, you can see he has a, a he's, he's pledged, but it's flat instead of annual, so it shows a pledged amount of, it shows this pledged amount of um, however much he pledge at the beginning so it's always going to be 2000 no matter what the time frame um, you uh, pledge for so if you have a one-year pledge I recommend doing flat instead of annual if it's multi-year pledge you can do annual because that means that they have you know more than one payment essentially um, any uh, other questions? Hopefully that answered your question, Martha. Yep. Okay, I am uh, not seeing any other uh, questions come in. Um, Again, this is being recorded and it will be put up on our website by the end of the week. Um, if you guys have uh, any uh, further questions, you can always email us or uh, give us a call and we will uh, be glad to help you out then. Um, so let me just end it and everybody have a good day. Thanks. Bye.